Hi, uh, I'm Mike Edelhart, the CEO of the Tomorrow Project, producers of Pivot Conference, and I'm here at uh, Pivot Conference with Linda Holiday uh, of uh, Cydia. You know, we don't have to pretend like we don't uh, know one another. We know each other uh, pretty well, and uh, I know Cydia uh, fairly well, and have hopefully been a friend and, and helpful uh, while you've been uh, working on it. So uh, let's share with folks a little bit more about what Cydia is. So well, I've heard you talk a fair amount about this notion of big stories and small pieces. So you know, just what does that mean and, and what does that have to do with kind of the core uh, idea behind Cydia? Well, a few years ago I started to notice, as a lot of people did, that media was going from a solid to a liquid, basically becoming a flow. And for somebody who thinks a lot about um, long-form content and bigger content, that became a little bit of an issue. How do we get big things to fit into what have, what have become flows of media? So that's the problem I started to work on. And, and it led us to this kind of concept of modularity and card-based media. So talk a little bit more about that. So Cydia produces pretty much any kind of content in a card interface. And so just how does that work? Is it like postcards? Is it uh, the same everywhere that uh, it might be seen? Does it flow? Just how does it work? The metaphor we like the best is a shipping container because the standardization of that container allows content, in that case physical content, to move from trains to planes to trucks to rail. And you can put anything in a container that will fit and you can put anything on a card and since it's digital anything literally can fit. And if, um, so this is a card interface, but most of the content uh, out there is not in cards. I mean, it's in documents, it's in books, it's in all kinds of formats. So if I'm somebody who has a lot of content and this is intriguing to me, do I have to, you know, put these all together piece by piece? Uh, and, uh, and how do I keep control of it once it's, uh, once it's out there, if it's all on these cards? Well, um, you can think of the card as a thumbnail or an index for content, so it can actually lead somebody to a much larger piece of content. But by keeping that card co a constant, we can actually apply a lot of technology to moving it around and tracking it. Uh, the fragmentation of the media landscape has become a pretty serious problem for professional communicators, whether you're an individual or a company. So getting something to be visible and shareable across a really wide variety of screen sizes from literally from two inches to 54 inches and from social mobile platforms into open websites is a distribution headache, nightmare. It's almost unsolvable. It's so complicated. So by keeping everything in this standard content object, we can handle all that background technology and negotiate and create all of the, the um, relationships that allow that content to move across all of those systems. Got it. So this is in HTML5. It, it basically flows and uh, operates a, anywhere it needs to, right? It's an HTML5 core because that gives us the most efficiency and flexibility. But we build native wrappers to make that content um, not just available in other platforms, but beautiful. Got it. You know, and one of the things uh, when I talk about Cydia to folks that I uh, talk about a lot is the back of the card. That, you know, sometimes people say, well, there are other cards out there. There are things that look like cards. There are card stacks. And, uh, but, uh, you know, when I talk about the card back, that you can have content mm -hmm. on the front. And then you can have pretty much anything on the back that the uh, owner of the content would like the content to uh, engender. I think that's really one of the things about it that uh, is most powerful. I think there's a lot of power in there we haven't even discovered yet because um, we all understand cards as intuitive objects because we've all played with them. You know, from, from our childhood, we understand that cards have backs. So people already know that a card has a back. The card user interface is very young, and most people who are making card interfaces are basically putting rectangles on the glass, which mm -hmm. is a start. But when you think about what a card can be and what programming can do, a card can be almost anything. Turning it over is kind of a, you know, important aspect it lets the it lets the user lean in and discover things which I say we um, you know display advertising is kind of hard to figure out online yet we shop so much you have to go to a 12-step program mm -hmm. to stop mm -hmm. so we have to find ways of enticing people to content more than forcing it on them so turning the card over I think is going to be a really powerful way to let the user decide when they're interested in something yeah I think so that it feels that way to me I think the other thing that uh, is really powerful about this is, is how many different uh, formats can be created from it. I mean, you stack them up next to one another. It's a website. You put them serially. 
and it's uh, uh, a card deck uh, uh, interface. You put them one after another, and it uh, it works on mobile. I think folks are going to be able to experiment a lot with this and learn a lot about just what kinds of interfaces really work for the sort of folks they're reaching out to. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of the challenge comes in as a software company because we have to make all those interfaces uh, flexible and beautiful and diverse and we have to make it happen on pretty much whatever device the person is using. So, you know, iOS can be kind of easy because that programming environment is so robust, but making something operate like that in lesser environments is much harder. So our real job as a software company is to continue to turn out beautiful UIs that people can insert their content into and publish overnight without doing any of that difficult coding themselves. Right. So uh, how long has uh, City been around uh, and uh, uh, how big is the company, uh, those kinds of, uh, of fundamentals? Well, if you don't count the time when I was working on it almost all by mm -hmm. myself, uh, basically two years and um, you know we've done some serious thinking about these formats and we've invested in some pretty um, serious intellectual property and have filed a few patents on that. Hopefully that will go well. And we've designed uh, five interfaces so far and have, have created APIs across a variety of social and um, source environments such as pulling YouTube videos and iTunes and making cards work on various so uh, social platforms. And you've done uh, 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 several uh, really pretty neat uh, implementation. So um, share a little bit about uh, that, because there's some cool stuff on City already. Well, we started thinking about books, because if books don't play in the slipstream, they're not going to be discovered. So we did Kevin Kelly's What Technology Wants, which you know, and mm -hmm. I'm sure have read. It's a pretty serious, geeky tome. And we put that in the marketplace, and we got a call from Snoop Dogg's agency saying, that's what we need to put Snoop's new <laughs> album out on. And, Really, you saw Kevin Kelly and said that's what we need? I was going to say, you said that as if it's the most natural transition on earth. So Kevin Kelly's Geek Book and then uh, suddenly Snoop Dogg. So what did Snoop Dogg do with it? Well, their concept was to publish on all platforms at once. For, for them, that meant a new album, Snoop Dogg, now Snoop Lion, has a big story around changing genre from um, hip-hop to reggae. So they did a documentary film with Vice. They did a book with Rizzoli. And they did this um, interactive, uh, you know, content with us, in addition to the album, all at once. So um, this is the component of that multi-platform media launch. Snoop's actually really an innovator in the field, and it's been interesting to move around and and have that as a demonstration pro project and hear a lot of people say how innovative he is because it seems a little incongruous with his reputation as the the kind of musician he is. Yeah, but. Uh Still, uh, yeah, he always seems to be one of those guys who's a little bit out front on everything. So what next? What kinds of things will City be doing uh, uh, here in the next little while uh, without necessarily sharing other people's business? Well, it's strange. Our, our incoming is, is really all over the place. We're talking about a, a catalog for three to six-year-old boys for uh, toys. We've got financial services companies talking to us about releasing really dry kind of corporate um, information. It's I think it's validation that the people who think about distribution of content see the containers and realize they can put anything in them. So we're actually trying to um, close and deliver a bunch of different projects so that we can show the diversity of the platform. We've also got a blog interface that will be finished in November. We have a single card um, uh, object that can be put on a website and a multi-card stack that can be put on a website. Our goal is to make whatever anybody needs and we're just kind of ticking through that in the product roadmap. Busy. Busy. A lot going on. <laughs> so if folks want to learn more about uh, City and they want to explore this and understand what it might uh, do for them or their organization, uh, what's the best way to uh, reach out and uh, find out more about you guys? Uh, well, our website, you can find out how to contact us in person. We'd love to talk to anybody who's interested in it. And uh, we'll be around here at the conference. If, if anybody's here, they can find us, and we'd be happy to talk about it here, too. That's right. Uh, we'll be uh, here uh, till midday today and uh, 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 in uh, New York. So if you happen to be in New York, uh, reach out. This is one of the most extraordinary bits of software I've seen in a long time uh, for shizzle, I guess. So. <laughs> for shizzle. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you.